No, wait a minute. Are we seeing this right? Are we seeing this right? You have one gosling, one silky hen, and two little chicks. Yeah. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning. What you got there? We have uh, kitchen scraps and some scrambled eggs. Um, the kitchen scraps are from my husband's restaurant, so we're gonna nice. feed the chickens with that. We have some feed as well, so I go let the chickens out of their coops. What's the scrambled eggs for? They are for the goslings. I think they might need a little more protein, and it's the easiest protein I have on hand. Uh, our chicken eggs. The feed is, I believe, about 20% protein, but I believe they need a little extra, so. <laughs> the neck is coming out. There they go. What do you have the chickens doing in here? In here? They are being rotated around the yard <laughs> to um, fertilize different sections of the yard. We had them in the garden before we started planting, so they worked there first. That's not a bad idea. Put a cage over the water so the gosling won't get in it. Yes. I just gave that to them this way recently because I didn't want the chicks to fall into it. Yeah. But the gosling could get her whole head in. I'm going to take these off so I can see what I'm doing. This is what it looks like after, but it's gonna come right back better than ever. And that was just one day there. <laughs> Who do you think's eating all the greens? The gosling, <laughs> definitely. Silky moms don't really scratch the ground as much as the larger birds. Now wait a minute, are we seeing this right? Are we seeing this right? You have one gosling, one silky hen, and two little chicks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, silky moms, they're great at raising any eggs <laughs> and for and um incubating any eggs and i gave her a goose egg and two chicken eggs and the chicken eggs are from uh my main flock um actually my breeding group that i have separated she's raised all of them together i wasn't sure if she'd be able to cover the the goose egg uh -huh. uh, because the goose egg is like <laughs> this big um as well as cover chicken eggs but she was able to Get herself over about, she actually had five eggs, the goose egg and four chicken eggs. Oh. Chicken eggs take about 21 days to hatch and the gosling egg takes about 29. How did you work that out, raising them together? Well, I got lucky actually. Um, I had a girl from the main flock who went broody and I gave her four gosling eggs to start with. and. Um, over the next week, I had two silkies go broody. So what I did was I took I took one of the gosling eggs for each silky, and gave them chicken eggs to go with it. And so the hatch was a little bit staggered, which I don't usually like. These chicks were actually due a couple days before the goose eggs were due. These chicks hatched on a Tuesday. I think they were due on Thursday. This goose hatched on Thursday and she was due to hatch on Sunday. So she hatched really early, which was actually very lucky because mom stayed on her nest for two days after her chicks hatched. But then she had to go start teaching them where the food and water was, so she got off the nest. I thought this goose egg was done. I looked in and there was this tiny gosling who was shaking, so cold. So I actually had to take the gosling out and put her under heat and kind of nurse her back to health a little bit. And after about a day and a half, she was up and moving around uh, a lot better. And these chicks were just running everywhere, so I had to make sure she was moving well. Uh, after a day and a half, I put her back under mom at night and she cuddled right up with mom and mom had no problem with it and started, you know, teaching the gosling what to eat as well the next day. We did name the gosling, this is the only gosling with the name right now, um, we named her Lucky. Wait a minute, you're just two weeks old and you're almost as big as your mom. <laughs> 
she's got another set. Two chicks, one gosling. To time this right, since the gosling egg takes 29 days and the chicks take 21 days, you set the gosling under the broody hen first and then time it right, do your math, and then set the chicken eggs and theoretically you hatch them together and then you trick that goose into thinking it's a chicken this is imprinted on the mama hen. That's even better. You know, I raised a goose with a geese, uh, yeah, a goose with chicks, and that'll work to imprint the goose on the on the chicks so that they'll guard them. They'll think they're yeah. chicken, yeah, and then guard them. But you're doing it under a, a you. <laughs> you've got a chicken raising a goose, so that's got to be even better. They're gonna yeah. be so imprinted. Yeah, I actually don't have any artificial setup here, so all. The chicks I've hatched and everything, I've used broody mums. I'm just going to put this in the corner. Come on, guys. She's a little nervous for me. Yeah, it, it, they were nervous about the water when I first put it in there. I'm gonna back up a little bit. They're so fun, aren't they? Yeah, they are so curious, but so n nervous about new things. I've not given them eggs yet, so this is the first time they've seen that bowl in there, so. Makes me miss Donald, our guard goose. This mom won't let me touch her gosling, and I want to, I want the gosling to accept me as well. Mm. So what are you going to do with it if it's not going to be a guard goose? Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas goose! And your husband's a chef. I imagine that's going to be an amazing Christmas dinner. Yeah, um, <laughs> that'll be a fun one. We've never actually had Christmas goose, so... Have you had goose, period? I don't think I have. I've had duck, but I don't think I've had okay. goose. So that'll be a new experience. Are you afraid she's going to eat you if you put that in there? <laughs> she's going to get attacked here. She's going to get attacked. Yeah, she's, she's pretty more darn quick. And the trick is I'm gonna, I wanna put this down and grab her water maybe in one shot cause she's probably gonna come right over and snatch at my hand. She is very protective. Oh, she didn't move. I'm th well, maybe she won't move cause uh, she's sitting on two chicks over there. Oh, they found the egg. Yeah, you found the eggs too. <laughs> You're too close for my comfort. I might rip around the other side. Can we hold this up for you? Sure. Actually, you know what I could do? This one's not the broken one. There you go. Nice. I've just gotten so used to holding it by hand. <laughs> I served as a distraction. Yes, you did. Mama saw me. I didn't even see you. No, that was nice. Thank you. Because she will take my hand off. Good mama. Stop. Oh boy. I bet you don't have to feed them much. So. No, actually, I, I put food in their feeder over here, but they go through <laughs> it so slowly that because they get all these greens and stuff, the only issue you have to watch is I get rubber bands yeah. on some of the things. And you saved this herbs. garbage from the dumpster. Basically, yeah. I mean, this would have been thrown out completely. Um, why not turn it into chicken food? Those chickens there were allowed to free range and pretty much prepped her raised bed garden beds. She hadn't intentionally planted anything in here yet, except for these wild strawberries. It's Wait, you even got the potatoes as potatoes uh, volunteers? Too. Yeah, we had potatoes <laughs> in this bed last year. So those potatoes are basically where we planted them last year. There's three of them there. Oh, okay. But they did dig out a few, and we have one growing over on the edge here, <laughs> and we have one growing over on the edge way over there. So, yeah, they've pretty much spread out my potatoes. You have sunflowers? Sunflowers. What else do you have growing in here on the Why? <laughs> Most of this is volunteer. Sunflowers and then potatoes, and a bunch of tomato plants around here. Um, I just left them growing in one of the beds over there. When we were looking for a farm feature in Michigan, we have an application process for you guys to fill out. We found Sydney. What caught my attention was this Hugo culture bed. And when she had submitted the film to be on the tour, this was in the winter. Um, last fall, 
I put together this hugel culture bed. So you can look at my Instagram pictures. I have pictures of it at each stage. Nothing's planted in it yet except we have at the very end I have put in some garlic. Now if we're warming up to 55 by next weekend I might actually put some uh, seeds in that won't start now but um, as soon as it gets warm enough they will you know germinate at the right temperatures and start like carrots other cold weather plants. And I thought that'll be really fun to see where that has progressed. Look at it now. What in all do you have planted in here? We have garlic, herbs, lavender, potatoes, kale, uh, eggplant, mustard greens, and cucumbers. And the cucumbers are still coming up yet. For those that don't know, basically what is a hucoculture bed? It is a raised bed system where the center of it is basically wood. You put big logs in there, some smaller stuff, some green material, and cover it over and it creates a very fertile raised bed system. Sweet. And I've heard that you don't have to water it as much either, is that right? Yeah, the wood basically acts as a sponge as it's breaking down and holds water so you really don't have to do much to this bed. And this is our first year, so we're trying it out and testing it now. For those of you that want more about a hucoculture, how to build it, the, more about what the plant she has in here, even more of what the benefits are. Guys, I opened up my membership area again. I haven't even been able to announce it. We've been so busy, but we opened it up a few days ago. People are getting in. It's going good, so I encourage you to check that out. She's grabbing some garlic for the breakfast. These are garlic scapes, so they're the tips. You wanna get them before the bulbs get too big. Oh. And you treat it just like garlic when you're cooking. Um, so I'm oh. not taking the bulbs out of the ground right now, just taking the tops, and they smell a lot like garlic. <laughs> okay. And her husband, I'm looking forward to this, is a professional chef. He's gonna make us some omelets. Yes. Some omelets with some garlic scapes and some forged greens. Are you guys curious about what the inside of this looks like? Let's see. Straw mulch on the top. Oh wow, there's the soil right there. Looks nice and rich. It's really thick. She laid it on. Yeah, and then there's the, you can't see it in there, but about six inches under is the, the pile of wood. And by the way, if you like what Cindy's doing, she's sharing her journey with us at Part-Time Permies. Part-Time Permies. the YouTube Permies. channel name? That's YouTube channel, okay, cool. Instagram, and Facebook name. Oh, wow. Cindy, thank you for the morning tour. I am looking forward to breakfast. Yes, so am I. <laughs> yeah. My? It's a lot of <laughs> This looks like an amazing breakfast. Tell us about it. I mean, you're the chef. Well, we're cooking with almost all local product today. Uh, the eggs are from our hens. And nice. then we have fresh garlic scapes that were just uh, harvested this morning nice. with you and Cindy. We mm. have sauteed common plantains, mm. um, which is a foraged uh, weed that yeah. Nobby helps us uh, find. Is and this Nobby? This is Nobby. Yeah. Hello, Navi. She's Hi. one of the most knowledgeable forester, uh, for, foragers in our area. Cool. I'm loving it right I now. I have pickled ramps, pickled fiddlehead ferns, Ooh. and pickled mushrooms. Most of it foraged from this area. The mushrooms are local cultivated. Uh, we have some bacon, which I prepared uh, this winter from a red wattle heritage hog. Cool. And it's brown sugar and black pepper cured, and it was uh, hard smoked here at the house. 